Across Europe, you can still find medieval beams holding up barns, churches, bridges and granaries that were built before entire countries existed in their modern form. These timbers endured storms, floods, harsh winters and endless moisture. Yet they remain strong enough today that conservation teams often leave them exactly where they've stood for five hundred to a thousand years. For the first minute, consider how extraordinary that is. In our age of pressure-treated lumber and chemical preservatives, most outdoor wood still decays in ten to twenty years. Meanwhile, medieval builders working with nothing more than regional knowledge, observation, and natural materials, produced wood that outlasted generations. This guide breaks down how they did it, step by step, with methods anyone can still apply. If you're a serious history buff, or a survivalist interested in longevity, what follows is a record of some of the most effective wood preservation techniques ever created. Medieval builders began by harvesting timber at the exact time of year when rot resistance was naturally highest. Everything started with the timing. Medieval carpenters didn't cut trees at random. They harvested in the dead of winter, often during the waning moon. The reasoning is simple but powerful. In winter, a tree pulls its sap down into its roots. Sap is rich in sugars that attract insects and feed fungi. When the tree is dormant, those sugars drop dramatically. The result is timber that begins its life already far more resistant to decay. Written records from Norway to Bavaria describe winter felling as a near law. Anyone working with wood today can adopt this practice immediately. Winter cutting produces timber that dries more evenly, resists blue stain moulds, and suffers less insect activity. It's one of the most effective, low-effort steps a survivalist or traditional builder can take. The next key method was removing the bark and seasoning wood slowly, under controlled airflow. After felling, medieval carpenters stripped the bark early because the space under bark traps moisture, insects, and early fungal spores. Once stripped, the wood was stacked under deep overhangs or open-sided sheds, never touching soil and never exposed to direct rain. The goal was slow drying. Rapid drying splits timber and invites internal cracks where rot can begin. Slow drying ensures that the cells tighten naturally, leaving a harder, more stable beam. You can replicate this today by raising your wood stack on stones or pallets and covering it with a roof that allows air to move freely across all sides. Traditional timber framers still season oak this way before building frames that last centuries. The principle hasn't changed. Medieval carpenters extended the life of ground-contact wood through charring and sacrificial bases. First, they charred the ends of posts by rotating them over fire until the outer layer carbonized. Carbon creates a barrier fungi cannot penetrate easily. It also resists insects and sheds water far more effectively than raw wood. Archaeologists have excavated charred timber foundations in Europe that remain recognisable after centuries underground. Second, in many regions, carpenters refused to place the primary post directly in soil. Instead, they created what are called sacrificial bases. These were shorter blocks or stones that bore the rot while the structural post rested safely above it. In England's medieval barns, you often find oak posts sitting on stone plinths. In Scandinavia, storehouses were raised on mushroom-shaped stone pillars. Anyone building an off-grid shelter, or say a fence, can use the same approach. Char the wood that goes below grade, then elevate the structural posts slightly on stone or gravel. 
Even just a few inches of separation prevents decades of decay. The most powerful preservation material of the Middle Ages was lime, applied as a wash, soak or composite coating. While Vikings used pine tar extensively, much of medieval Europe relied on lime. Lime wash wasn't just a white coating on buildings. It was a breathable, alkaline, antimicrobial shield that seeped into the surface fibres of the wood. The high pH discouraged fungi and insects. Lime wash also sealed cracks without trapping moisture, allowing wood to dry instead of rot. Medieval churches used lime on trusses. Rural granaries washed support beams with it. Some builders soaked timber ends in lime water before installation. A modern builder can make lime wash using hydrated lime mixed with clean water until it forms a thin, paintable slurry. Brushed onto raw timber, it hardens into a mineral coating that recharges itself with every rainfall. Medieval craftsmen also employed tannin-rich soaks that hardened wood fibres and made them hostile to decay. Regions with abundant oak or chestnut relied heavily on tannin content. Tannins bond with the proteins in wood fibres, making them denser and more resistant to fungal attack. Some traditions soaked beams in bog water, which contains tannins, minerals and low oxygen. Bog oak, preserved for thousands of years, proves the effectiveness of this environment. Other builders made concentrated brews from oak bark or acorns, then soaked fence posts or tool handles in the solution. The result was naturally fortified timber. For a modern adaptation, anyone can boil oak bark or acorns to produce a dark, tannin-rich liquid. The real secret is that medieval builders layered several methods instead of relying on one. What created the nearly immortal timber of the Middle Ages wasn't a single magic trick. It was a system. Winter harvesting reduced sap. Bark removal limited pests. Slow drying stabilized the fiber. Charring protected the vulnerable ends. Lime or tannin treatments added mineral defense. Ground isolation kept moisture at bay. When all these steps were combined, the result was wood that could endure century after century. These methods still work. They require patience, understanding and simple materials. Nothing synthetic, nothing industrial, nothing modern. If you found this guide valuable, subscribe to Relic Logic and share it with others who appreciate real historical craftsmanship and the survival knowledge hidden inside old world building traditions.